Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our 10th webinar hosted by the Islam Travel Group. Sorry, Madhushan, it's out. Uh, so we are just about to start our webinar for uh, Undiscovered Land of Splendor, and we have Madhushan here from Gal Oil Lodge, who's going to give us a presentation. Um, you just need to unmute yourself. Hi, Madhushan, can you hear me? Yes, Luna. Can you hear me too? Perfect. Yeah, I can hear you, and I just did our brief introduction, so I think we can start your presentation okay great so uh, people normally ask me why galway uh, when you think of wildlife tourism here in sri lanka you automatically think of yala maybe will and uh, while we were looking around for potential sites we, of course, went to Yala and had a great time, great safari. Actually, saw a leopard on my first visit to Yala as well. But we were also surrounded by two or three hundred jeeps and loads of people. And it kind of put up a dampener just for us on our experience there. So uh, then we thought, well, you know, what else is out there? So we decided to do a road trip throughout Sri Lanka and visited all of the national parks over here in Sri Lanka and uh, then just totally fell in love with Galway. So uh, on our very first trip there, we sort of camped by the lake up to no one else around, you know, beautiful scenery, herd of elephants by the lake and birds everywhere. And, you know, we just thought, wow, this is truly something amazing. So, uh, and uh, after sort of doing a bit more digging, we also realized that there were no lodges in the area very few people sort of servicing the park so we kind of felt that we had the whole place to ourselves the lake itself again standing sri lanka's largest lake and this along with the surrounding areas we really felt it gave us a great opportunity to create some unique experiences that we felt that you couldn't replicate anywhere else in the island so uh, you can imagine the experiences are a massive part of what we are trying to do at galera we kind of describe ourselves as much more how do i put into this uh, as much more get back to nature type of a place and not not a tick tick the box uh, kind of like a safari lodge and this is quite important and the reason i mention this is while it's amazing to have the whole park to yourself well not quite but almost we do have all the animals you find in all of the national parks in sri lanka uh, like lots of leopards and bears but we just don't see them very very often so uh, uh, I would I would tell you that these animals are a little bit not quite used to the sounds of the jeeps, the sound of the voices. So they are very skittish. So it's actually very difficult to see sort of leopards and bears obviously have lots of elephants and birds and deer and stuff like that. So, you know, this is quite important to remember to sort of 
manage guest expectations. If you have clients who really want to come to see the leopard, the bear, the sort of tick that box, then Gala is probably not the right place for them to come. Having said that, we do get a lot of wildlife focus groups and wildlife individuals. And what I recommend to them is, you know, go to Yala or I prefer Vilpattu, but either or have a good time, obviously, and sort of try and see that leopard and bear. And so tick that box and then come to us and sort of much more get back to nature type of experience and feel. So uh, our activities, when it comes to our activities, the boat safari is probably the most better well known one. It is such, it is such a stunning lake, Sri Lanka's largest and we go out for some two to two and a half hours and it's a great way to see animals from different perspectives from the boat looking on the show where the animals come down to drink etc and etc so just a different way of doing the safari i would say again the lake itself is stunning with very few people on it a couple of fishermen but nothing Nothing more. I guess everyone sort of coming to us with the hope of seeing swimming elephants. These elephants sort of go as famous as swimming elephants of Galway. They are trying to go from island to island in search of fresh grass. So this is obviously all, almost the most amazing sights. Obviously, we can guarantee it. And you have to be very lucky. But we have had, and yeah, we do get good sightings throughout the year. So there is always that chance. Other than that, we try to organize some picnics. So if you are on the morning boat safari, then we'll take a picnic breakfast with us. So, you know, on one of those islands, obviously very beautiful, very beautiful scenery and hopefully with a herd of elephants in the distance. Evenings, also what we kind of do is like, we do the same set of thing with a sundowner or with some refreshments. So this is one of our sort of main activities that most of the guests want to do. However, we also have the more traditional Jeep Safari but even this is slightly different to what's available in the other national parks over here in Sri Lanka, because we actually we are actually allowed to get out of the jeep and walk in designated routes. So this is again just something slightly different, I would say. And we can also have a lovely picnic by the main river that runs through the park again i mean the whole park to uh, to yourselves to ourselves which we feel really really awesome you know you can swim you can swim the river relax take a book chill and then as the sun goes down get back into your jeep and hopefully see some animals i know i kind of mentioned it uh, previously as as a jeep safari but I actually come again, uh, like to call it more of, more of like a jungle drive. Again, purely to manage guest, guest expectations. However, we thought long and had to tailor all these experiences in a way that even if you don't really see much, we hope that you have a great time. And any wildlife living sightings will be a simple bonus. Of course, we hope to see elephants on the safari, as well as lots of birds and deers and stuff like that. But again, it's quite important to remember the wildlife over there, Gallo National Park is pretty shy. The naturalists are the big part of what we are trying to do, actually. So we have pretty much, we have like eight full-time naturalists currently working with us. 
So on your arrival, you will get your designated naturalist and they will stay with you for the whole trip. We don't need guest share jeeps or share boats. So you can really have an exclusive experience. So uh, the very unique experience on offer is a chance to be the Vadas of Sri Lanka. I guess, uh, I guess best described as the ab Aboriginals of Sri Lanka. Uh, there's only two settlements left, and one of them so happened to be our neighbors. So, so this gives a great opportunity to go on a walk with them, jungle walk. What we do with one of our naturalists, like translating uh, to learn about the flora and fauna and the medicinal plants. They are very much hunter gatherers still, and they are very open to questions. So you can sort of ask what you want, and they are very, very open to answering that. And what we don't making them to do is to dress up and sort of dance for you or anything partic particular like that. And uh, we are pretty much against that. Obviously, some guests do want to go and see their village and their households. So if the guests request that, we can organize that as well too. So, but otherwise, Think of it more as a jungle walk with them as your guide and explaining, explaining the things about jungle. So, uh, you know, we also have lots of lovely walks, bird walks in and around the lodge, the buffer zone and the surrounding forestry lands. Again, these, need, these walks need to be tailored uh, to be short, half an hour, bird walks and there are sort of longer ones as well and we also do some night walks in and around the property this is more sort of a uh, sort of nocturnal birds i would say repti reptiles amphibians that sort of thing so if you are incredibly lucky maybe a loris or maybe a pangolin or a fishing cat As well as that, we have some more strenuous hikes in and around the area. The climb up to Monkey Mountain has become one of the more popular ones. However, as an agent, I really wouldn't sort of pre-book on this because it is very tough, to be honest. So we much prefer to be able to talk to the guests, so explain to them exactly what it is, what it involves, because it's sort of pretty much uphill climb and jungle whacking. And I would say it is pretty much like that sort of a jungle whacking thing. But obviously for the right people, it's actually brilliant, stunning views and I'm not the favorite. So uh, apart from that, we also do a jungle cooking course, but this again is slightly different to what I think, what a lot of other people offer for us as much more of a uh, full gene exped expedition. So we sort of go out into the surrounding jungles and forage for ingredients, and then actually go to one of the jungle huts and one of the villagers will come and he will show us how to cook the traditional food from that area. So these, are uh, much more the food of the that does rather than your normal Sri Lankan rice and curry, I would say. Again, this became very popular lately. Apart from that, we do have bicycle rides. Again, you can go out with your naturalist and you can talk to them whether you want to just to go along with the main road or want to do some a bit more strenuous and various options and and that as well as a chance to visit uh, the animal monitoring center i'll talk a little bit more about that towards at the end of my presentation so uh, when it comes to food the food itself you know 
a lot of it's grown on our own farm. Otherwise, uh, this will locally sourced and produced. And uh, we've actually just started a new initiative with some of the local farmers to encourage them to grow sort of ingredients what we uh, what we use and then we sort of pay them above the market rate. So hopefully that is uh, that is always a win-win situation with, with both the parties. So apart from that, many in terms of menus, uh, you know, we are quite quite basic. But you know, of course, we provide quite tasty food. So the breakfast is obviously that's a choice of Western option rather than Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan breakfast. Lunch is a bit more of an a la carte menu with again a choice of Western options and some fusion options. I would say the dinner is a bit more of a fixed menu where there is Western sort of meat fish option or vegetarian or then Sri Lankan rice and curry. We can of course tailor so the meals uh, what the guests require and that's something that the guest relation officer will discuss with the guests on the arrival. So when it comes to the lodge, the lodge itself, we have a 10 bungalows, relatively small, situated in sort of 23 acres of private and bordering the national park and forestry, forestry lands and buffer zones. And as you can see, it is all built using local sourced materials. And pretty much everything is either teak, iluk, which is thatched basically, and the granite stone. So quite open air, as you can see. Couple of very important things to note. There are no sort of signposts leading to the property. So it is very, very important that your ground handler phones us before coming to us. And uh, then what we do is send out one of our jeeps to meet you on the road and lead you the last bit of the journey. Another uh, two very important things are like there is absolutely no phone signal, no internet at the lodge. So this is very important that you mention this stuff to your guests before they arrive to the lodge. Most guests we found absolutely love it. The amount of families that come up to come up to us saying, hope oh, our children speaking to us for the first time during the meal, rather than sitting on their iPods, iPads, sorry. Uh, you know, we think it's a great addition to the lodge, but it is something very much important that you have to mention uh, this to the guests before they arrive to the lodge. And uh, there is no such a thing as I will come to the office and use the hidden Wi-Fi there. Uh, that just doesn't exist. <laughs> so that's important to remember. We do, of course, have a satellite phone, which the guests can use if they need to. And uh, when we talk about our bungalows, the bungalows themselves, as you can see it, it's quite simple but spacious as we hope it's comfortable too and uh, we again with some uh, and we again with some teak teak structure and thatched roofs are there a couple of things again to note there is no air conditioning no uh, only just a fan is available inside the rooms and of course there there there, uh, there are no mini bar facility or a tv uh, that sort of a facility anything like that inside the rooms. But so it's uh, this is not a great picture, by the way, but basically the bungalow is two squares slightly offset from each other. And the living room is a great size and designed in such a way that uh, can fit an extra bed. But also the L couch can be sort of transformed into a single bed. That's the same with a single bed. So we quite often get families 
who will just share one of the bungalows because the bungalows are quite spread out from each other. So families with younger kids, we recommend sort of staying in one bungalow. There is no such, uh, there, is, there is nothing dangerous or anything like that between in some of the bungalows, but because they are so far apart and there's no way to communicate between the two of them, uh, most people opt uh, for sharing one. If they have sort of, if, like if we have sort of like a huge family with younger kids, we also do have the two bedroom villa, which is more suitable uh, for the adult children and teenagers like that, or a bigger group, or that has two rooms, two sort of indoor outdoor sitting room, or two attached bathroom. Of course, the thing uh, the thing to note here: this is the only one bathroom uh, villa. Let me turn off my camera. So guys, these are the bungalows uh, uh, which has veranda. So almost all of our bungalows have private verandas with views overlooking the sort of land and the jungle. And the bathrooms. The sort of indoor outdoor concept, all of our water is uh, solar heated as well. So, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the conservation side of Gala is actually a bigger part of what we do and something that we are all very passionate about. To be honest, I think the converse, uh, conservation side is something more synced within my heart and so our business partners hearts as well uh, in the actual terms of hospitality side so what we have actually done is built a research center partnering up with the uk based charity and the idea behind that is that we have built a sort of a two two bedroom office, some space bungalow, and we invite scientists from all over the world to come and stay for as long as they want, totally free of charge and do whatever research they want. And we, uh, and we have had these students from Germany, France, from UK, Netherlands, coming to stay up for six months, totally on us. All we ask in return is that if guests are interested and then they go through and what they're trying to do and a little bit more information about their project. We also work with a lot of local nonprofit organizations. One of the better well known ones is the Wilderness Wildlife Conservation Trust, which is run by Dr. Andrew Kittle and Anjali Watson, which do a lot of animal monitoring program. They have just started monitoring leopard populations inside the national park. This is one of the reasons we know there are actually leopards. It's full of leopards pretty much uh, during the night times, most of our camera traps, it pretty much uh, catch, catch up the leopards. So it's just that during the daytime, it's difficult to spot them. So our naturalists also used to get involved with them and they will also support uh, with their work. They will also give a helping hand with their work, uh, maybe in the field, things like that. We also do the patch forest research with WWCT uh, and we closely uh, working with the Sri Lanka Butterfly Association because as you know, uh, the Nilgala Forest Reserve, which is bordering Gala National Park, it is very, very famous for butterfly watching over here in Sri Lanka. And we also work with a non-profit organization which is based in India, which is known as uh, Fishing Cat Conservancy, where we do our fishing cat studies. And apart from that, so you know uh, that the beginning, it was meant to be quite separate. The guest lodge, 
and the conservation center. But we soon realized that the guests actually loved it. So we do invite them to, get, to come and sort of take part so you can help to set up the camera traps, visit the research center and get involved. So again, this has become a very popular activity among the guests as well. In regards to where we are, if you, do, if you don't really know, we are towards the east of Sri Lanka, quite a remote area, actually quite well connected. So only about three and a half hours from Kandy, but similar to Cultural Triangle, and a bit longer down south, you know, local ground handlers have found a great way to include us pretty much a year around because when the south coast is in the season, you can sort of come to us via the hill country or the tea country to visit us maybe to Allah, also then back down south. And then during the summer months, you can do the similar sort of thing but then head to East Coast up and round. So we do kind of fit in all year round in that side of things. I think that's pretty much it. I obviously haven't really touched, uh, touched on too much of the current climate, but please be rest assured, we are obviously following all the health and safety guidelines uh, that the government has recommended here. And I hope uh, by what I have described, as you guys have seen in the pictures, uh, that we feel that they're actually quite well suited for the new normal. Uh, very few rooms, all incredibly spaced apart, privately gu guided safaris. We have our own Jeeps, so we don't have to hire out. And as I said, each guest get, uh, and I, as I said, each guest get their own naturalist and almost creating your own mini bubble. Yeah, I think that's about it from me. So I hand, it, hand this over to Luna. Madhushan, that was great. Thank you so much for explaining to us about Galdoya Lodge and also the park because that itself is super interesting. Um, there is also quite a few Sri Lankans themselves that don't know how amazing the Galoya National Park is, right, Madhushan? Correct. Uh, to be honest with you, Luna, actually some of the locals, they doesn't know that Galoya is existing up over here in Sri Lanka as well, because we yeah. hardly do our marketing stuff over here in Sri Lanka. We, we wanted to keep it like a very private property in Sri Lanka. So mm -hmm. that's why you don't even get a, we don't have a name board uh, in the road as well. So we wanted to have, keep it like a very, very secretive place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep it a bit conservative and take care of the park and that's the priority of the lodge as well. Correct. Right? Correct. Yes. I mean, uh, guy, uh, anyone who is here, everyone who's participating, if you have any questions, um, you can write it in and I can ask it or please feel free to ask yourself. Um, I have a question. Could you send us some photos and videos? Yes, we can definitely do that. Uh, Madhusha and I will send you some. Are there any more questions? Please feel free to write or ask. Otherwise, I have a few. Maybe on behalf of everyone, I could ask these. So you said the season, it's kind of an all year round season, correct? Of course, Luna, of course, yeah. Yeah. And then, so what happens with the, where the monsoon is up on the East Coast? Do you guys get affected by that being in a natural park with so much forestation around it or no? Uh, to be honest with you, the North East monsoon blows in somewhere around from October to November. So though, uh, though we get the monsoon, like it's like, uh, uh, it's not like pretty hard, but then again, we kind of like still do the activities during the mm -hmm. rain as well. Uh, like, it doesn't uh, obstruct your activities and the experience from the clients, right? They can still do the boat safari and all that. Yes. Uh, we have a few questions coming in, Madhushan, so I'm just going to ask them. Okay, uh, go ahead. Could you please highlight a little about the COVID procedures of Galoya Lodge? 
so uh, Luna, we we kind of had registered. We uh, we ha we had got the sa uh, safe and secure certificate from the KPMG auditors mm -hmm. uh, recently, very recently. So we are uh, right now at the level two. So we are we uh, we are not belonging to level one. So we belongs to level two. So uh, we do follow the safety secures like. Uh, in most of the public areas, guests are uh, asked to use the masks as well. So, as you know, since we are the only property available, uh, almost all of our guests are like uh, all inclusive basis basis because they have to eat uh, all the three meals from the lodge. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, sometimes they use the pool as well. So uh, when it comes to the pool, we kind of like. Uh, set up the timings we hardly mix the guests with each other so at the arrival itself we tell the guests uh, uh, when it comes to the usage of pool and also at the arrival we also uh, tell the guests if they want a uh, want a separate table so mm -hmm. they can actually pre-book the tables so we mm -hmm. kind of like give like uh, set timings for the meals as well if they are using uh, the restaurant facility over there at the lodge but most of the cases most of the time, like uh, most of our guests, they will go outside for the excursions, like to do a boat mm -hmm. safari. Sometimes their lunch is a picnic lunch. So they will have mm -hmm. the lunch in, uh, inside the national park. So sometimes they will have their uh, breakfast uh, inside the boat uh, or uh, on top of a rock. So it's, mm -hmm. it's like so pretty your much. Clientele is, it's not so often people that come for leisure, they mostly come for activities and experiences, right? Mostly activities and experiences. But having said that, we do get uh, a little bit of clientele who comes for relaxations as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but we hardly take one night bookings because uh, within uh, 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 with one night, you uh, can't really explore the Galler area. Yeah. So, so that's the next question, Madhushan, if you don't mind me. Um, how many nights would you recommend to visit Galler? Yeah? Lunch. I would say I would say uh, two to three nights is a must if you are visiting Valor. Three is the best, uh, yeah. but I know like uh, 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 the foreigners they come on a short period of time, so uh, uh, two to three nights is, is a must at a Galway. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm getting a few questions regarding COVID procedures, but you already touched on those. What about so you are Galloway Lodge is not a level one property um, for all no. the agents that under I don't know if everyone understands it here because I'm getting a few a lot of Indian agents that are asking this. Um, we have a travel bub bubble currently in Sri Lanka, so for incoming tourists, you have to select one of the level one properties. Currently, I, know, I, I believe know. there are about 115 on this property on this list. So I'm just answering because they're asking what about PCR tests. Um, but they only need to do, there are PCR regulations and we will take note of the agents that are asking us this and send it their way. Yeah. Um, so that's again, I'm getting more questions about the PCR. We will definitely send you that information. So let me just get back to the lodge. So you said, um, and you said one thing that's really interesting that you cannot do in any of the other parks is get out of the Jeep, right? So when they do a safari, they can walk around as well and kind of do yes, bush walks. Yeah. Well, not exactly bush walks, but similar to that, right? <laughs> but but I, let me correct uh, myself, Luna. Uh, in, in Horton Plains, actually, you can, uh, Horton Plains National yes. Park, you can actually walk. Sorry, you have yes. to walk. So you apart from that, uh, uh, you, uh, as you know, Yala and Milpati, you can't really get down from the Jeep and walk. Yeah. So, uh, Galway, nice. we have that option. There are se several designated routes. Mm -hmm. So, we always. And the clients are given the leech socks and the special shoes to protect them, right? Uh, we, uh, we don't have leeches uh, around, uh, uh, around Galway, but oh, uh, as you know, again, it's uh, we are at the intermediate zone of Sri Lanka. We do have a dry season and a wet season. It's kind of a mix, okay. uh, mixed season. So we don't have leeches uh, in Galway. Okay, so they just need good tracking shoes or good trainers of and course. that's enough for them? Yes, correct. Would you say Galway Lodge is also family friendly for kids below the ages of 12? Of course, of course. Yeah? Uh, of course, but, uh, but, uh, but I don't recommend for like infants 
but uh, the children who are like uh, who are like above three to five years age, uh, normally uh, I would say our top selling months are like July and August, as mm -hmm. you know, depending upon the European holiday season. Uh, yes. Most of the uh, families they tend to book gal very well in advance. So yeah, must be a nice. We only have one villa room available. So yeah, it must is be a nice uh, family experience, right? Like yes, you said, being away from technology and in nature a little bit. Correct. Would you correct. say uh, there's a question? Is it safe to get out of the jeep and walk around? It's a valid question. Of course, of course, because anyway, uh, uh, you will be accompanied by our nationalists and as well as the park tracker as well. Oh, perfect. So they will have both of them with them, the clients. Right? Yes. Uh, can you organize seaplane or similar transportation from Colombo to Gal Oya? Uh, uh, not the seaplane, but then again, uh, when it comes to like, we used to get uh, like a lot of uh, cinema air uh, transfers mm -hmm. uh, and the heli, tour, heli tours. So we don't have a helipad at the property, but uh, what we kind of do is like there is a school nearby. There is a playground over there. So okay. uh, all these helicopters, they do land over there and okay. uh, they will, uh, we will be picking up uh, them from the school. So it will be like only like uh, five to six minutes away from the lodge. So okay, and then when, when it, Air is operational, where does, where, how close to Galloy does it land? Uh, it normally, uh, the closest is the Batiklo. Batiklo. And that is how long of a drive then from there? From Batiklo to uh, Gala, again, it will be like two to two and a half hours. Okay, so Nadia, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Cinnamon Air is a air, um, air service that we have in Sri Lanka, in case you're not sure. Um, so it will take them to the East Coast and then they'll have a two hour drive to the lodge. Or heli helicopters are possible because they have a school close, close by. Correct, Madhusha? Yes, correct, Luna. Okay, no more questions. Uh, you did mention that um, the monkey mountain climb track is yes. quite, it can be quite intense. So you said it's better when the clients are on property that you speak to you guys directly, your naturalist, your guide, and then get the advice, right? Correct, correct. But they can do it when they arrive, they can organize it and, and do it with you guys. Of course, and to add on to it, Luna, we only do the morning our morning hikes because we kind of like started from like 5, 3, uh, uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. So oh, Madhushan, it sounds like you are already in Galoya, Lodge. I hear cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, there are a little bit of sounds over here. That's okay, it's nice to hear nature. But yeah, okay, so. So uh, we only do morning hikes. So within five minutes of the uh, within five minutes from the property, you will uh, you can head to the foot of the mountain. So if you guys have climbed Pidurangala Rock, it's pretty much like that. Uh, so back and forth, I would say it's three hours. Within one and a half, one and a half hours, you'll be at the top of the mountain. But then again, uh, in Pidurangala, you will get uh, the steps. Uh, the speciality over here is like you don't get any steps in Maki Mountain. So that's why it's a little bit hard. So like, let's say if it get rained uh, the previous day, so we don't recommend uh, this at all to the guests. Okay. Obviously, the boat safari is probably the most popular or highest in demand for you guys. And to do that, um, every client will have the chance to do a boat safari if they like, correct? I think Madhushan is muting because there is some loud noise. Is it okay, Luna? Yeah, I, now I can hear you again. I said like, obviously, wherever client whichever clients stay on in Galoya Lodge, they have the opportunity to do the boat safari, correct? Of course, of course. So let me add a little bit of information to that. So mm -hmm. when it comes to boat safari, we don't have our own boats. Uh, we have to use the wildlife department boats. They only have three boats available at the National Park. 
actually it is a good thing that they are kind of like trying to monitoring it no limit the number of visits to the national park so uh, i would say every activity has to juggle up according to the availability of the boat so 95% uh, of our clientele they wanted to do a boat safari when they are at the launch so okay yeah is the climate predictable that's an interesting question no, in no, sri lanka not at no. all not at all <laughs> because it's not predictable no <laughs> because uh, to be honest with you luna this is actually the dry season so we are still kind of like expecting rains here and there so it's still everywhere it's still kind of like uh, super greeny uh, around okay. the lodge the national park and everywhere I'm just going to, we can just wait two minutes to see if any other um, questions are coming in. And I will just, I think those are all the questions. Is it climb? No, got Okay, everyone, I think we're coming to an I think we're coming to an end now as all the questions have been answered. If I've missed any, please just retype them and I can see them here. Um, we will certainly send out all the um, product information that you need, high resolution pictures or um, details of the excursions. Um, there, also if clients stay for three nights, Madhushan, are there any other interesting sites around the park, just out, not just the excursions you provide. Is there anything else? There are actually a couple of uh, activities as well. There are so much of archaeological sites uh, surrounding the property. Uh, uh, to name one of those, which is known as Rajakala. Even some people they doesn't know that uh, it, it exists as well. So uh, Rajakala. Uh, Correct. So we hardly promote archaeological sites because we do promote uh, uh, the lodge as a wildlife uh, wildlife lodge. So from our lo from our lodge to this uh, particular archaeological site, it'll be like one to one and a half hours towards the Ampara side. Okay. So it's a, a pretty much beautiful uh, archaeological site, and if they need, I can provide you provide them more information on that too. Yeah, I mean, if clients want to stay there three nights or longer and they don't want to do the excursions that you provide, they will, Galloway can offer them some excursion outside, right? Like, okay. these archaeological sites. Perfect. That's great. I see one person typing still, and I think we will wrap it up after that one. Oh, the other question is, since there is the benefits of no signal and no internet and, you know, just disconnecting a little bit from the outside world, what happens in case of an emergency? Yes, in, in case of an emergency, to be honest, we are in the middle of jungle, in the middle of the jungle, in the middle of nowhere. So the closest hospital for us is the Bibila Hospital, which is 20 minutes away from the lodge. But uh, for us, uh, uh, from the lodge, the Ampara is somewhere, bit, uh, somewhere around one to one and a half hours from the lodge. So in Ampara, we do have the Ampara base hospital. I would say it is pretty much well equipped when, when it compared to the Bibil hospital. But then again, we do have a doctor on call basis within 10 minutes away where she runs a private clinic. So depending okay. upon her availability, what we kind of do is like if there is an emergency, uh, she will visit the lodge or else depending upon her availability, we, uh, we will take the guest to her clinic as well. And uh, as I mentioned before, we kind of like use a satellite phone at the lodge. So okay. it's uh, it's purely it's purely for the staff working over there. But uh, sometimes Luna, it's not uh, most of the time it's not working, to be honest. Like, let's say if it's raining, if it's raining uh, or if, it, if we have uh, like a lot of winds, it doesn't work at all. 
so okay. uh, but uh, but within like uh, from the lodge within like uh, 50 to 20 minutes time uh, you can get the uh, signal or the wifi so uh, what we call these safaris as we call these safaris wifi safaris so mm -hmm. <laughs> let's say if a guest wanted to uh go for an emergency call or emergency uh interview or whatever we can we we kind of like help the guests to arrange that uh, as well we call oh, them as wifi safaris okay that's great okay guys madushan i don't want to take up any more of your time um i no don't see any more questions coming in but thank you so much um everyone who is here please if you have any further questions please email us the email address is on the invitation that was sent out to everyone um regarding any pictures again like we said we will send you all those informations so i think that's about it madushan shall we just say goodbye and also for rates and prices please get in touch with us and we will certainly send them your way any tariffs anyone okay please Luna, thank, thank you once again thank you. for arranging this it's a good chat Absolutely. with all of you all Our pleasure. We love working with you guys and we look forward to working more with you guys. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you Madushan. Thank you.